Great. I yield back to the chair. Thank you, Senator Hickenlooper. So in my opening remarks, I talked about the field hearing that we did last Friday in New Hampshire. It was focused on how we can help small businesses lower their energy costs. But one of the things that one of the witnesses said really struck me because he said, he was talking about USDA's grant programs that are targeted to small business. And I think it's true of many other um, grant programs we have. He said, these are reimbursement-based grants. The work needs to be done up front, and the federal cash comes in later. It's often difficult for our small businesses to front the cash, and that's a challenge. So I know, Mr. Luce, you received a REAP grant, which operates exactly that way for your solar panels. So can you talk about how you dealt with that piece of it? And then I'd like to ask each of the rest of you if you have, and you may have uh, thoughts about this too, but if you have any ideas for how we should be thinking about that problem that small businesses have. Yeah. Um, so for the solar panels, I received a, a federal loan, federal low interest loan um, through our, our CDFA. Um, so it wasn't a REAP grant? No, I'm applying for a REAP grant for okay. the geothermal, but I have to show proof of funds for the REAP, REAP grant. Yeah. And geothermal is expensive. Like this project might be three or $400,000 and I'm a small business, so um, showing proof of those funds and then actually spending those funds is, is pretty difficult, difficult to do for a yeah. small business. I think the, the federal loan that I used for the solar panels had milestones where they reimbursed based on milestones of the project. Um, even in that case, I had to go to my bank and get a line of credit to cover some of those gaps. Um, and that was a smaller project than what I'm looking at with the REAP grant. Um, so I think it would be much easier for small businesses if they had some sort of milestones like that where they uh, paid out a, a certain amount at the beginning of the project and then when you met a certain point of the project and showed that you'd completed 50% of the project or something, you get a little bit more and then you don't get it all until, until the project is complete. I think some arrangement like that might still create cash flow challenges and capital challenges for the smallest businesses, but it would be easier to deal with. Like, I don't know that if I went to my bank and, and said, I need $400,000 to cover this and to this newer technology that isn't utilized very much with geothermal heating, um, I'm not sure how they would collateralize that. I'm not sure that it would be something they'd be willing to take the risk on and go through all the trouble of um, underwriting a loan like that for a short period of time to bridge that gap. So it has potentially, it is, has the potential to be an issue for you as well. Yes, yes. Um, Ms. Lank, and then I'm gonna ask if each of the other panelists would have any ideas for how we should think about addressing that. Sure, thank you very much. It's definitely a problem that needs to be fixed. Um, we've had several projects that we've looked at who have struggled with this because the problem is, I mean, you know what the problem is, but for USDA loan, you've got, the equity has to come in first. Mm. So if you're not getting it until months after the deal's closed, I mean, yes, it's free money, but you know, if you can't front that money, it doesn't help you be able to close your loan at all. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that'll use bridge lenders, but they can be very expensive. Um, someone had suggested an SBA loan, but that's not what SBA is designed to do. It's not, it's not, for short-term financing, it's for long-term financing. So I don't have a great suggestion, but it's definitely something that needs to be worked on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Barker, do you have any thoughts about that? Well, that's been one of the frustrations in being small town Iowa. Uh, it, it just doesn't make sense for any project that we have. And so the minute uh, some of these requirements are known, it just stops the discussion right there and we have to go a different direction and get it done another way. And Mr. Menke. Um, just going back to Mr. Barker's principle of the best solutions are local. Sometimes utilizing our revolving loan funds within the state uh, can be uh, potentially options mm -hmm. in these situations. Well, thank you all. I, I agree. It's, um, it's clearly a challenge that we've got to think about how to address if we're going to help our smallest businesses. Senator Kennedy.
small businesses, rural and otherwise. Uh, being against rural small businesses is like being against golden retreat.